Hi everyone, I'm Max Marginot, and I'm here to talk about linear regression. Linear regression is a classic statistical model that is used in a very wide variety of fields, finance included. The basic idea is that you have some outcome variable, a dependent variable, and you try to quantify it in terms of an intercept and a number of independent variables that each have their own coefficient associated with them. Once you fit this model, the coefficient associated with an independent variable quantifies its influence on the outcome variable. In finance, we use this for a variety of purposes, chief among them risk modeling. If you're trying to evaluate the market beta, the influence of the market on a uh, trading strategy, then what you do is you take the returns of that trading strategy and regress them upon the returns of the market and an intercept term. In this case, the beta coefficient associated with the returns of the market gives you your market beta. It gives you the number of units uh, that your outcome variable moves by when the market moves. When you have a high beta coefficient, a high exposure to the market, then any small movement in the market is going to heavily influence the returns of your strategy. Whereas if you have a low beta coefficient, a low exposure to the market, then the returns of your strategy are driven almost entirely by that alpha term, by the novel return that is left over after removing the influence of the market. In a multiple linear regression, you can add as many different independent variables as you want, though you may be limited by general good modeling procedure. As a linear regression is a statistical model, it comes with a few baked-in assumptions. The first is that there is a linear relationship between the independent variables that you are putting into the model and the dependent variable that you are trying to model. Another is that the residuals, the manifested differences between the predictions of your model and the observations that you use to train the model, are independent and identically distributed. This will manifest as a just cloud of scattered points uh, when you plot the observations versus the model predictions. If there's any sort of trend in this residuals plot, then that could indicate something is wrong with your model. This could be something along the lines of there not being a linear relationship or the presence of heteroscedasticity, which is when the variances of your model change across time. And that's something that we want to prevent. We want to make sure that the residuals are independent and identically distributed, usually just normally distributed. Another thing to keep in mind is that the independent variables in your model actually need to be independent from each other. If there is any sort of correlation between them, then that is going to mess up the parameter estimates in your model. So you won't be able to rely on the coefficients or the error bounds around them. What's important to note is that the predictions will still be fine. You just can't draw any conclusions about the actual quantified influence of the inputs on the outputs. It's important to make sure that your model doesn't have too many parameters in it. You want to make sure that you're only using parameters, you're only using independent variables that contribute to the predictive power of your model. If you're tossing extra stuff in there, then you are at risk of overfitting to the observations that you have, which is when you fit to the noise rather than the signal. To check whether you're using too many parameters or not, a common thing to do is to use AIC or BIC, Common Information Criterion, that evaluate how much information is in a model. AIC and BIC can tell you whether adding a new parameter to your model actually increases the amount of information in it or not. Another way to evaluate model fit when comparing uh, between different versions of the same model, adding and subtracting different parameters into it, is to look at the adjusted R squared of each individual model. We want to make sure that we're looking at the adjusted R squared because the adjusted R squared includes a penalty for including too many terms that aren't useful. 